Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a new video from our web development cave. I hope you're getting something out of my videos and let's see what we have to cover today. Today's video is about the most used internet protocol in the world. Can you guess that? Yeah, that's right, man. It is the HTTP protocol. When we mention the HTTP, that means we need to talk about how the web works, at least having a general idea. This way, we will understand the HTTP better. So, let's jump right in this amazing, fascinating world. Let's start by defining the HTTP. The HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It is an application layer protocol that allows web-based applications to communicate and exchange data. You can think of the HTTP as the messenger in the web. It is a TCP IP based protocol and it is used to deliver contents for example, images, videos, audios, documents, etc. And if two computers want to communicate and exchange data, namely the client and the server, usually in form of a request response cycle, those two computers must speak, both of them, the HTTP communication protocol. The client is the computer that makes the request and the server is the one that serves by responding to the request. Now, before talking about the how and the why, you need to know three important things about the HTTP protocol. The first thing is that the HTTP protocol is a connectionless protocol. That is to say, the computers that communicate via the HTTP, as we said in a request response cycle, after making the request, the two computers disconnect from each other. And when the response is ready, the connection reestablishes again to deliver the response, then it closes. So, this is what we mean by a connectionless protocol. The second thing is that the HTTP can deliver any sort of data, as long as the two computers are able to read it. The third thing is, the HTTP is a stateless protocol. The HTTP is a stateless protocol. In other words, the client and server know about each other just during the current request. If the connection closes completely and the two computers want to connect again, they need to provide information to each other and you. And the connection is handled as the very first one. There are other important things and features about the HTTP, but we are not going to talk about them here. And before explaining how the web works, let's see why choosing the HTTP over something else. The HTTP was created first to fetch HTML documents and sends it back to the client. So we can say that the HTTP was designed for the web in the first place. That's all what the HTTP was doing in the 1991. And it didn't support other media types, just delivering HTML documents. But because it was designed in an exquisite way and it was being continually evolved and features were being added to it, it became the most convenient way to quickly and reliably move data on the web. And it features a lot of advantages that go beyond the scope in this video. So let's move to the most important part, the action part. How the web works and how the HTTP makes that possible. First, Let's see how the request response cycle happen. Here, we have the client on the left and the server on the right. A user wants to see a website. For example, www.mywebsite.com forward slash products forward slash myproduct.html. The user type in the URL of the page using a client program, usually a browser, but first, they need to be physically connected. I mean, the computer, of the user and the web server. That's the job of the internet. Using the TCP IP suite of protocols, it establishes the connection using a combination of cable media and wireless media and do all the necessary work to prepare the environment for the two computers to talk via the HTTP protocol. When the connection establishes, the client sends a request called an HTTP message. And because the HTTP is a connectionless protocol, the client disconnects from the server waiting for the response. The server on the other side process the request, prepare the response, establishes the connection again and send back the response. Again, in form of an HTTP message to the client. Then the two computers completely disconnect. That was a bit general. Now, because the HTTP is a protocol, it is defined by a set of precise rigorous rules. Let's take a close look at an HTTP message. First, the HTTP consists of three main sections, the start line, the headers and the body and they all contain plain text information unless if the body contains binary data but in general HTTP messages are plain text and easy to read the information in the three sections vary depending on the HTTP message whether it is a request or a response a request HTTP message differs from a response one and this is the information they contain we are going to take a close look at each one of them 
First, let's look at a request HTTP message. Let's use our HTTP request of our user. Here we have the start line on the top, which contains the method, the URI, and the HTTP version. We'll talk about those in a little more detail in a few. And we have the headers. The headers are basically name value pairs, and there can be a lot of headers, but let's be content with these three, okay? The host, accept, and accept language and the body doesn't exist because it's not needed now let's talk about them in detail in the start line the first thing we find is the method basically the method is a sort of command from the client it tells the server what it should do for example give me data delete this or put this in the database there is two well-known HTTP methods and you've most likely heard of them. They are the get to tell the server to send you the data and the post to tell it to store data in the database. And there are others such as put, delete, etc. In our user case, the method is get because the user wants to display a web page on the browser. So he is asking the server to give him the web page. Then we have the URI, Uniform Resource Identifier. The URI is a set of readable characters and a way to locate the resources we are requesting from the server. For example, in our case is products forward slash myproducts.html and we have the HTTP version that the client is using so that the server understands the message well. The headers specify some information and rules, for example, the host, which is the address of the server to which we are sending the request, which is www.mywebsite.com. Accept language specify the language and accept tells the server what type of the file we are requesting. It holds a MIME type as its value. A MIME type looks like this. File type forward slash extension. For example, image forward slash gif, text forward slash html, etc. Let's talk now about a response HTTP message. As always, we have the start line, but in the response, we don't have a URI and the method because those are specifically for the request. So here we have the HTTP version with this code that is called the status code. And this code tells the client if the request succeeded or failed. It may contain 200 colon OK, which means the request succeeded, or it may contain the well-known code that every web user knows, the 404 colon file not found status code. And there are other codes. The headers contain also name value pairs, such as accept language or content length, etc. And finally, the response body contains the requested file, of course. In our case, this is the response message. So, that's how an HTTP message can look like. Of course, an HTTP message can be more complicated than our example and contains a lot of other information. Also, a client can send multiple HTTP requests to the server. That was how the HTTP protocol works in general. If you want to know more, you've got to search more and actually there are good books out there about the HTTP protocol, but this was just a brief overview. To sum up, we've seen that the HTTP is a TCP IP based application layer protocol that allows web based applications to communicate and exchange data. And computer Computers that communicate via the HTTP must speak the HTTP protocol. Also, we've seen three important features about the HTTP, which are that the HTTP is a stateless, connectionless protocol and can deliver any data. Also, we use the HTTP protocol because it is a convenient way to quickly and reliably move data on the web. We've seen that the request response cycle works on the web via HTTP messages. And also, a HTTP message contains three sections, the start line, the headers and the body and an HTTP request message differs from an HTTP response message. So that's it for this video. I hope you've learned something from it and don't forget to subscribe. Till the next video, stay tuned.